Hi, I'm Charlene Jurgensen. Today on Quilting from the Heartland, we are going to have a lot of fun playing with the bow tie quilt block using templates and a lot of fast cutting and sewing techniques. We will be working with the templates that are looking like this that have the fourth inch seam allowance in them. I will take you through the studio after a little bit, but first of all I want to show you what the basic parts to the bow tie block are. It really only has two parts to it. This piece goes in all four corners of this block. The one that I'm showing you right now is a six and a half inch unfinished block. And then this one goes into the center. It also uh, is in the 3 inch and in the 8 inch and I'm going to take you all the way through the studio on a little tour showing you uh, variations of quilts with all of these different sizes and I'm also going to show you what happens when you put different uh, fabrics together and we're even going to do a little bit of recycling of old ties. Let's take a look first at the project we're going to work on today. This one happens to be a six inch uh, block put into the formation of a Christmas wreath. We've topped off the wreath with a red bow and then we've set those bows on an ivory background and then outlined the whole quilt with a red and green border. Then let's look a little farther and see what happens when you put it into an eight inch block. Look at how that quilt grows. We've done the same pattern, just set it on a different color uh, background, and each one of the ties has a little different fabric in the bows. And I've outlined it with a plaid on the outside, and on the inside of that border, uh, touched it off with a little bit of green. Then let's go a little farther in the studio. Here we've done something totally different and I have recycled men's ties, the polyester and silk ties. What I did was I opened up the back of the ties, threw them into the washing machine, and the ones that didn't survive the laundry did not get to go into this quilt. But what a wonderful way to remember a loved one or to use as a Father's Day gift. I set all of those blocks on a horizontal pattern and then on the corners set off the whole border with a diagonal bow tie and then embellish the outside with some real elaborate quilting. That one is in a six inch block. Then down below it we've done some different things with the eight inch block. There we have uh, put every other block in a gold outlining the basic bow tie block. I want you to look in real close what happens when you don't use a real d deep tone for the bow tie itself. It gets lost in the quilt. So when you pick the fabrics for your bow tie quilt, make sure that your efforts are worthwhile and choose the fabrics that seem to stand out and make the bow tie quilt look real nice. Now come on back to the work area and I'll show you some other quilts with some different sizes. Here I have the same wreath that we are going to be working on today, but it's done in a miniature size, a three inch block. Each one of these sections is one three inch block and then we put them into the formation of a Christmas wreath. And then we've done some embellishing or quilting design, actually come in here with some little bow ties. And like the bigger one, we've outlined it in a couple of plaids, making it very festive for the holidays. Then we've done a matching pillow in an eight inch block and come around the outside of that one with a ruffle. So you see we have a lot of different things that we can do with this one design. Also, I've done some playing with the miniature one, which looks real cute in a teddy bear lap or something like that, probably a doll bed, and just set the blocks going horizontally across from each other. And here I have been very careful to use some real deep tones, making those bow ties stand out very nice. Then I had some fun playing with some plaids and stripes. 
and I just think it's just neat. Look at what happens when you separate your dark and your light tones of plaids and stripes. I wasn't careful at all. I didn't pay any attention to the grain of the fabric. I let the stripes and the plaids just happen the way they wanted to. And it looks very antique and I think it's real uh, a warm traditional looking quilt. But today we're going to work on something for the holidays and we're going to put that block into a Christmas wreath motif like the first one that I showed you on the wall. Working with the six and a half inch unfinished block. Like I have said in all of the other shows, the fourth inch is included in all of the templates so I say six and a half inch unfinished or a six inch finished block. After you have chosen your fabrics, you're going to want to wash them in a cold water and a mild soap so that the fabrics don't bleed together or the colors in the fabrics don't bleed together when you need to launder them. Then you want to shrink them in the dryer and iron them so that they're nice and smooth to work with. We're going to cut some strips and get ready for cutting out the bow tie and then we're going to actually put the quilt together today. Let's cut some, some bow tie blocks. We'll cut for these right up in here and then we'll get some background fabric in there and then we'll start putting those together. Fold your fabric in half, line up the selvage on one side over here and I'm going to do this one a little bit different. I'm going to fold it in half like this. For those of you that don't have the long ruler, I want you to know that you can also fold your fabric and forth and cut strips that way if you want to. Then lay your ruler down on the four thicknesses of fabric and line up the edge over here and straighten this edge here. And then with the rotary cutter, straighten this edge over here. Then turn your board and take the template and lay it down on top of your ruler. And it's going to call for a three and a half inch strip of fabric. And then before I go any farther, and I'm going to cut a strip for the square that goes into the block. And so for that one, just put the template down on top and move it over and cut the strip for that one. Rather than take the fabric up on top of the table a couple of times, we'll just cut both the strips at one time. Anything that we can do to save time is always uh, helpful. Now just place that square up on top of there and we will get four of these at one time. And just move it along on that strip of fabric until you've used it all up. Now if you're cutting scraps of course this would not be uh, any more difficult because you would use the small mat board like this and you would lay the pattern down on here and you could just turn your board and work as you go. Like I did on the one on the loom, I used all scraps for that one and I like to work on a smaller surface when I'm doing it that way. So we'll put our squares aside and then we'll cut the other part of the block out. Now if I were to pick this fabric up and move it like this, I'm going to lose the accuracy. So you want to take and make room to move your board as you work. Now I have disturbed that, but I wanted to show you what happens when you do that. So always allow plenty of room to cut out your pieces. Now of course depending on how many wreaths you're going to make, you would just cut the number of bows for the top of the wreaths. In this case I have six bows in the design 
or six wreaths, so I really only need six bows. But that's really the only two parts to the basic block, and then we need some background fabric for the other one. So we'll cut just one strip of that. We don't need the center part, just the outside part of it. Again, the fabric is folded in half. I already have it straightened. We have to go back. Always, though, when you pick, pick up the fabric uh, after it's been disturbed, you always want to straighten out that edge. And then again, turn the board and cut, I think it's a three and a half inch strip, but never trust yourself. Always go back and check. And it is a three and a half inch strip. Notice that I have fabric grips on the template and that keeps them from sliding on the fabric. Now you're not going to want to cut backhanded like that probably, um, but turn the board as you work. Now I'm not going to cut any more of these, but you see the idea of how fast it is and how you work your way across the board. And in a couple of uh, minutes, we're going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to show you how to put the block together that makes up all the different designs. Like I said in the beginning, the block is just one basic block and by turning them in different directions, you can make all these different things with the one basic block. <clears throat> we are going to first make the center part of the bow. We are going to sew with a scant fourth inch. We will be using pins when we put this block together. And I'll lay out the block as we're going to put it together. We're going to first join the center part, and then after we've got that on, I'm going to go and add the background piece. And that will be the basic block that will make up the whole quilt. Put this piece on top of this one, and you're going to need to line up the edges. And I want to point out, when you're looking down on it, that there are a couple of ears on the corner. You see right here there's a little bit of a red sticking out. I'm going to put the pin over here a fourth of an inch from both edges of this top piece and one over here. Now if you can't eyeball that you might want to mark it with a little bit of chalk or some marking tool that you have in your sewing room. I'm going to sew with a white thread so that you can see where my sewing lines are. I will back up the fr with this first stitch to the pin. And then I will go forward to the one on the opposite end. You see where I did that? I back up to that pin, come up to here, and back up again. And then we will put the one on the other end. You want to trim off all those loose threads as you go so that they don't get in your way. Okay, now we will put the one on the other end, over here. And that will make our first part of the bow tie block. Putting this one down, and like I said before, if you want to mark a first one or two of them so you get used to where the seam allowance is supposed to go. Also, I like to use the silk pins rather than big heavy pins for pinning because I get much more accuracy when I do that. Okay, again, we'll back up to that pin.
See how easy that is? I like doing it this way because I don't like to have that seam in the middle of the bow tie block. I like to have one uh, complete tie without a seam through the middle. Okay, now we're going to put the two sides on over here on the opposite side or what we call the background block. So lay it on the top bottom side like this and I'm going to turn it over and I'll lay it down and line up right in there. Now those two seam lines, the one here and the one over here will be my guide to stop sewing. So I will back up to here, sew over to here and then back up again. And then I look up here to make sure I've got it all lined up right. I'm not going to put any pins in this time. You might want to use pins when you just start doing this until you get used to it. And then when you approach this other corner, you want to stop right there and then back up. And then when you turn it over, you have the first um, background piece added on. Now we're going to want to sew this seam over here and the one over here. So you will turn it to the side like this, matching up that corner seam. Now if I were to turn it on this side, it would be easier for you to see that this is the corner that you would back into. But I'm going to work it from this side because it's easier for me to handle it that way. Now I'm going to start from the very outside of the block. I'm not going to leave a fourth of an inch open on the outside. So starting from there, go to the center and I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to adjust the fabric so that I don't get it into the seam. Do You see what I just did? I pulled the center of the tie out of the way. So move into the center and right on that intersection back up. <clears throat> That's how simple it is to set in the bow tie block. Now I won't do the other side because it's exactly the same and I have some blocks in the next step. Let's take a look at some of the next, next steps over here. This one here now, we've got both the sides ready to have the corner seam that I just showed you ready to go in like that. And on this one, it's finished all the way around and I'm going to turn it over to the back side so that you get a real close look at how it's ironed and how the corners lay. When you look at the block from this side, you see how the center block is ironed out on all four sides. And the four seams out here on the outside edge are ironed in a circular motion out here. That's very important that you iron this seam in that motion. After you have done that on all of the blocks that it takes to make the wreath, you are ready then to put it into sections into the wreath. And here you can see it start to go together. But before I do this seam through here, I'm going to turn this section over and show you why I had you iron the wreath in that way. Look at this intersection right in here. Remember I said to iron all of these in a circular motion? When you come over here then and put this seam in, those two seams go in alternate directions, making this particular seam a very flat and no bulk in the corners. And that is true for all of the seams. Now we're going to put this seam in here. And if I turn both of those over, you'll see that that's going to happen again. These are going to alternate each other so will these, and so will these. 
So all you have to do is remember to alternate or to always iron in a circular motion. Now I'm not going to use any pins at all in putting this main wreath together because those seams will lock together without any problem at all. I just hold my finger on them and uh, keep them in place just by pressing on that seam. Now I'm not going to back stitch to the edge of this quilt because it's not necessary to leave a fourth of an inch open out there. But sewing with a scant fourth inch, I will sew this seam across the center of the wreath block. When you approach those seams that are going to lock together, you might want to hold that seam down with the scissor or the point of a sharp pin or something just to keep it in place. And then check ahead and make sure that these seams are in place and work your way across that one. And check underneath and make sure that it's laying right. We've just about got our first wreath put together. Hasn't that been fast and easy to do? There is our first wreath. Now we will iron those again uh, in an opposite direction, putting it in this way right here. So that one will go this way, and so that makes this center one going in, an, in a rotating way. Let's go back now and put the wreaths into the final quilt. Remember now that this is just one way of putting the bow tie block together. There are so many other ways that you can lay it, like we showed you earlier. If you just glance quickly at the quilt that we're making today, you will notice that the wreaths are set on point, or that the wreath block is set on point, and that there are six side triangles and four corner triangles in this quilt. And we need to prepare the corner triangles and side triangles next before we start uh, putting those blocks into uh, rows. If you look a little closer here, maybe you can see easier what I mean. I call these the side triangles, and this would be a corner triangle down here at the bottom of the quilt. So we have four corner triangles, and then we have six of those that we need. Now when we cut these, we want to have the bias for the corner triangle to be in here. If you put it out here on the outside edge, it will be very hard to keep that quilt laying straight. And the same thing is true here. You want the bias to be up in here and up in here. So for this particular one, you want to cut an 18 and a fourth inch square. That will give you the perfect dimensions for filling in the side triangles. Take the 14, or the, excuse me, the 18 and a fourth inch square, lay it out on the cutting board like this, giving yourself plenty of room, and you want to cut that into four equal parts on the diagonal, going from this corner to this corner. And I have put a crease in the the square with an iron ahead of time so I know where those lines are. So we'll cut this apart like this. And like I said, I put a crease in there ahead of time so I know where the line is. And then we're going to want to put another cut in here. And like I said, I have a crease from the iron that I'm following. And then I would do that with the other half as well. I would cut through here. Let me put that in place so that you can see how that fits in there. 
See, that's where that piece fits, right there. That was cut from an 18 and a fourth inch square. Then for the corner squares out here, or the corner half squares, I cut a nine and a half inch square and just cut that on the diagonal. Take the nine and a half inch square and cut it on the diagonal like this and set it into here. Then you put it into rows. You sew the quilt into a row. <clears throat> like this. You see how that comes together? Here's our half square. Here's our no, excuse me, there's our half square and there's our quarter square. And then we have another one up in here that's finishing off the quilt. And you would sew these seams together on in strips like this through the diagonal, flip-flopping these seams in here in opposite directions from the wrong side when you iron them. I hope you've enjoyed watching the Christmas wreath go together for the holidays. I've had a lot of fun sharing it with you.